By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a match between Kundert and Baron Nick. And Kundert is playing with a deck called Reprint Tron. It's red and it's white. It's pretty interesting. It's got Tron lands, of course. And he's playing against Baron Nick, who's got kind of an Earn and Get and build, but different. He's called it Pay 8. It's green, it's white, and it's blue. And, and um, this match is played in the Reprint Masters, the tournament where you can only play with cards that are printed in Revised Chronicles and 4th Edition. Remember, every Tuesday I bring you more magic from this Reprint Masters tournament. Now, if you'd like to know more about the ins and outs of this tournament, the specific rules, the deck lists, simply check the description below and there you will find a link to the tournament website with all the information. Uh, what's important to know here is that it is a format with Mana Burn and without Fallen Empires. It's also a one Strip Mine format and a one Mistress Factory format. So again, if you'd like to know more about the specifics and the ins and outs, simply check the uh, link to the tournament website that you can find in the description below. Talking about the description, before we go to the uh, deck deck, as always, you can also find timestamps in the description below and there you can uh, find a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action, straight to the games. You can also find the separate timestamps of the uh, deck decks of the decks that are being played in this uh, specific video, in this episode. The cool thing is that these are two decks that are different than any of the decks that you've probably seen before. Of course, you're gonna see some similarities, but they're, they're pretty original. So I'm really looking forward to do the deck decks of these. Talking about that, let's start with the first one. Let's talk about the deck of Kundert Reprint Tron. And here we see the deck of Kundert Reprint Tron, and it's such an interesting deck. Now, first off, the colors, right, red and white. And when we look at the white package, uh, we kind of see your standard control, right? Four swords, three disenchants, one divine offering. You see that more now, by the way, when people choose to play instead of a full play set of disenchants, they play three disenchants and one divine offering. I think this is a pretty good strategy because there's usually always an artifact in the deck that you want to get rid of. And those lives that you get from divine offering, that could just be that sweet spot, you know, it just gives you enough space to, you know, live another turn, do another thing. So I think, um, think it's nice to include that. So when you're considering playing four disenchants, maybe you could make one of those disenchants a divine offering. And of course, we also see balance in here. And then when we look at the red section, I'm not surprised that Kundert is playing red with Tron. Remember the Tron lands, uh, the way they work is you've got an Urza's Tower, an Urza's Mine, and an Urza's Power Plant, right? If you have all three of them in the game, they start producing extra mana. So normally they just tap for one colorless mana, but when you've got all three, the tower taps for three, the mine and the power plant tap for two each. That means that when you've got Tron, when you've got Tron online, so you've got the three lands in, you have a lot of mana. So if you've got a lot of mana, it goes really well with X spells. So he's playing with two Disintegrates and a Fireball. He's also playing with a single Atok. Atok, of course, working really well here because this is a artifact heavy deck. And now let's take a look actually at the artifacts. Uh, what we're seeing here are, are a few cards I really like. Uh, first off, the two Yoshin Soldiers. I think Yoshin Soldier is a really nice card. It's a card that usually doesn't make the cut when I'm making decks. Um, but it is really good. It's got really good stats. It's for three mana, you have a one four, so you've got four toughness. So it can stop Mishra's Factory. It can stop every one drop. It can kill a Savannah Alliance. Um, you know, it's just really annoying. It doesn't work against Argovian Pixies, unfortunately, a card that you see more now uh, uh, played in this meta. But besides that, it's really good. And you can also attack with it because it doesn't tap when it attacks. So you can use it as an attacker and as a blocker. And you may think it only has one power. Absolutely true, but every time you can kind of ping your opponent for one, trust me, that starts to add up. Talking about pinging for one, he also plays with three Triskelions, the Trikes, and uh, one Tetravus. Perhaps I would have expected him to play with a full play set of tri Trikes and maybe even two Tetravus. Um, the hard thing, because I've played Tron as well, the hard thing with Tron is um, you have to build a deck that can function if you don't have Tron, and you have to build a deck that is super good once you have Tron, because when you have Tron, um, you want to be rewarded for it, right? And at the same time, you need to make sure that you can do something if you don't have Tron. I think white and red both are quite important there, because we see four lightning bolts, four swords. That's kind of going to help Kundert control the board until he's got Tron, and then when Tron is online, he can start casting Triskel, and he can start casting Tetravis. 
And hopefully, and I'm so hope we're going to see that in this game, he gets to uh, start playing Colossus of Sardia. I'm really excited about that. Another card that I think is really cool in this deck uh, is the Hive. Like the Hive is five to cast, and then you need to pay, I believe, is it another five or four? Anyway, you need to pay lots of mana, again, tap it, and all you get in return is a 1-1 one, one flyer. Now, this may seem pretty weak, but actually... In old school, it's not that bad, especially in, from my experience, I can say like Highlander formats, old school Highlander formats where you've got more time, it's even better. But here in combination with Tron, it could be pretty good. And then we also see another old time favorite of mine, Aladdin's Ring, right? So Aladdin's Ring is just such an epic card. So it's eight to cast, it's eight and tap to use. So we're 16 manas in. And you know how much damage you deal for 16 mana? four damage four whole points of damage that's all you get right so i mean at least it's recurring damage right it, once it untaps you can tap it again so every turn you can basically deal four damage which is pretty devastating if you get the aladdin's ring online but i still kind of feel maybe you should have just made it eight damage for example you know because four damage doesn't even kill some of the creatures that you see a lot in old school like shivan dragon mahamoti jinn actually uh, the opponent baron nick is playing one papa moti so the Ellen String isn't even going to kill Mahamoti Jin. Um, anyway, um, looking at the rest of it, we also see Rocket Launch. Rocket Launch is something that I'd like to point out. It's four mana to cast. And it's, it's, it's one of those cards where you have to read the Oracle text, right? Because what it does, um, you can pay two and then you can deal one damage, right? Doesn't sound very interesting, but you can do it multiple times. And at the end of the turn... At the end of your end, at the beginning of your end step, this is the thing. At the beginning of your next end step, it destroys itself. So let's say you've got 20 mana, right? That equals 10 damage. And that scenario is not unheard of in this deck because he's playing with Tron, right? So let's say he's got Tron online, life is perfect. Then he can use 20 mana, deal 10 damage. There is a trick because what he can do is on the end of the end step of his opponent, he can activate the rocket launcher, deal 10 damage. And guess what? The rocket launcher is not destroyed because it is destroyed at the next beginning of the end step. And the beginning of the end step has already been. So he can take his turn again. He can deal another 10 damage and then his opponent is dead. But even, but let's say his opponent is not dead. There's a little miracle. Uh, then he has to wait until the beginning of his end step until his rocket launcher um, destroys itself. So the cool thing with rocket launcher is according to the new rules and the new Oracle text and all that stuff, you can now use it twice. So you can use it at the end of the end step of your opponent, and then you can use it again in your own turn before it destroys itself. So that's just something I want to tell you because it might be relevant. Um, we pretty much talked about everything. Uh, the sideboard, I think those red elemental blasts are definitely going to see play since uh, Baron Nick is playing with a lot of blue. Um, another thing I haven't addressed yet are the three J, uh, JM Day Tomes. Of course, they're very good in this deck because what if you've got Tron but you don't have the right weapons? The JM Day Tome is going to help you find those. So I, I understand that he's playing with, with three of those. It, it may sound like a lot, but in this deck, actually, I don't think it is. I think it's a good decision. Okay, so this is the deck of Kunert. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this deck. Have you ever played Tron? I can really recommend it. It's a lot of fun and it's really viable, uh, especially in the Swedish rule set. In other rule sets, for example, with four strip mine or where Mishra's workshop is not restricted, you can just play four Mishra's workshops. You don't see a lot of Tron because why would you play it? But especially in the Swedish format and actually this weird reprint masters format, um, it is viable and it's actually a lot of fun to play. So this is the deck of Kundert. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Baron Nick. And here we see the deck of Baron Nick. So he's called the deck Pay 8, probably referring to the 8 mana casting cost of Mahamoti Jin. And I think what this deck wants to do is ramp up at the beginning of the game with the 4 Birds of Paradise, the Soul Ring, the 1 Mana Vault, and then just play out bigger creatures like uh, the Urnum Jin, the Surrendip Afrit, and the Sarah Angel, and also the Juggernaut. All these creatures have pretty good stats, especially for old school, like Urnum, um, Urnum Jin being a 4-5 for only 4 mana, that's like insane value, and the Surrendip Afrit, a 3-4 flyer for 3 mana, that's probably even better value, right? And remember, this is the Reprint Masters, so that means that Baron doesn't have to worry a city in a bottle, usually city in a bottle is huge when you're playing with too much Arabian Nights but here in the reprint masters you cannot play with City in the Bottle because it has not been reprinted it's as simple as that so when I'm looking at this deck it looks really powerful right so he wants to ramp up play out big creatures and then cast an arm again and 
wiping the board of all the lands and then you know if, if the opponent doesn't have a bigger creature on the board he can simply win the game just by that just by attacking with for example the Shoranda Prefrit that he was able to cast in turn two or the Urnan Jin that he was able to cast in turn three or also turn two depending on the ramp that he draws into um, now what else do we see in the deck what's interesting here is that there's no land tax the reason I'm saying this is that he is playing with uh, Sylvan Library Sylvan Library and land tax go together really well and he's also playing with not one not two not three but a full play set of ivory towers so he's actually got a lot of life gain in this deck and usually you see land tax in combination with ivory tower because land tax allows you to get lands in your hand right and that means that you probably have more cards in hand than four and that means ivory tower gets activated and you start gaining life so I'm, I, I actually like it, Baron, that you've chosen not to include Lantex because I'm just really curious to see how the Ivory Towers will hold up because, um, you know, being able to ramp up and being able to quickly play out your spells and your creatures probably means that you're pretty light uh, with cards on hand in, let's say, turn three or four if everything goes according to plan. And then what is the value of the Ivory Tower? Of course, after casting your Armageddon, you know, you will just be refilling your hand again and then you will start gaining life. So I'm just interesting to kind of see how that goes. Another nice thing, of course, is the combination between Sylvan Library and, and Ivory Tower. Sylvan Library allows you to look at the top three cards of your deck, put them in any order, and then you draw a card. But it also allows you to draw an extra card if you want to. You can do that two times, so you can draw two extra cards, but you have to pay four life every time you do that. So you've got to pay eight life if you want to draw two extra cards. Ivory Tower is giving life to Baron Nick. So it's giving him the life and he can then exchange that life to draw into extra cards. So that's actually quite nice, that synergy between those two cards. So I, I, I really, I do see the potential of that. So um, here we have the deck of Baron Nick. We've already looked at the deck of his opponent, Kundert. So that means it's time to go to the games. Game number one of the top 16 of the reprint master. So whoever wins this will advance to the top eight. So both of these players um, managed to advance to the top 16 in a 45 player field. And we see Kundert starting with the plateau and look at that Baronic playing his second dual land there. And that really cool play mat, by the way, Baron. And he's ramping up like I kind of expected with that Birds of Paradise. So now he's got four mana. We're probably going to see a creature that's the Juggernaut. 5-3 artifact creature that has to attack. Quick response by Kundert playing the Swords to Plowshares and pass turn here. So Kundert drawing in and finding a City of Brass. Perhaps a Yoshin Soldier. That would be a possibility. Nope, just passing turn here. And tapping five for a Sarah Angel. So Barry Nick just has so much firepower in his deck and he's demonstrating that right now. Really playing out those creatures, going heavy on it. There we see a lightning bolt on the bird. Bolt the bird, it's a classic. Actually, it's not bolt the bird, it's bolt the angel, which is a better option, of course. And then play the disintegrate. Does mean that that Sarah Angel is removed from the game together with the other creature because that was plowed. So his graveyard is still empty, but still he's lost two creatures. But look at him go playing even more creatures. There is an Urnum Jin, only two cards in hand now. And now we see that Ivory Tower kind of being useless for Baron. On the other hand, I'm sure he's not complaining because now he can swing in with four. And also Kundert has kind of lost three top removal spells already. There we see a Sylvan Library. And his deck is really working on full cylinders. There's a Surrender Pafrit and he can start getting even more um finding even more creatures next turn with that sylvan there's the yoshin soldier it's not gonna do much though i mean he can jump block with it if he wants to perhaps he needs to he is still on 16 at the moment we see baron slowly going down as well he's taking four for an extra card he's going on 16 there's a full attack kundert choosing not to block kundert's going down to nine here and I mean, this is just looking really rough. There's a Brain Geyser refilling his hand also. That means that the Ivory Tower is now active. And here we can see that Sylvan Library Ivory Tower synergy where he has to pay life for cards but gains life for cards as well. There we see a Triskelion. So what he can do now potentially is double block the Urnum. So perhaps this means that Baron will not attack with the Urnum. That will buy uh, Kundert sometime. Not a lot, but sometime. He's going to first take a damage from the Surrender Befreed. So he's gonna to go to 15. And let's see, yeah, so he's gonna to go to 15. Then he's gonna look at his hand. 
Gonna look at the top three cards for the Sylvan trigger. And he can... He's gonna also take some life from the tower, I guess. And he's gonna pay some life. So he's, he ends up at 13 life, it seems, after all the math is done. Remember, he gains life from the Ivory Tower, then he pays for extra cards that he wants to get with the Sylvan, but he also has to pay one life for the Surrender. Look at this, playing a lot. Oh, this is pretty much game, isn't it? Look, this is brutal, playing double Spirit Link on both of his creatures, disenchanting the Triskelion. Triskelion probably going to do, deal some damage. Going to go to the face. He could have decided to play it on the Urnum instead. No, that wouldn't have worked, by the way, because Urnimus Toughness 5, so that wouldn't have worked. Okay, no, this is this is the right play from Kundert. Baron Nick is all the way back on 17. I mean, those Spirit Links also work so well with the Sylvan Library. And now Kundert's on 6. Gonna draw some extra cards. And he's gonna pass. That's it. Gonna pass turn. This was a quick game 1, and Baron Nick was... He was actually playing like a juggernaut. Like, boom, 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 boom. Threat after threat after threat after threat. And, you know, Kunder tried to come up with some solutions early game, but just the threats kept on coming. And then the Sylvan, to make matters worse, allowed Baron to kind of draw into more firepower. Wow. Okay, so both of these um, uh, players are going to sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, and uh, both players still shuffling up here. So let's hope for Kunder that he gets a little bit more time. And, uh, yeah... You know, find find the space. At least he can board in uh, his red elemental blast. Although that's not going to be so good against Baronic. There is a bolt the bird. That's a classic move that's been done since 1993, the beginning of the game itself. Bolt the bird. Of course, a good decision by uh, by Kundert here. He doesn't want to let. Uh, Baron ramp up. There we see a COP green coming in from the sideboard. That is pretty sweet. It's going to help him against those Urnums. There is a second bird. Will we see, for example, a Surrender Perfrit? Tapping two is going to play a COP red. Okay, I don't think actually Kundert minds that much because he's going to use his direct damage on creatures anyway. There's a Jam Daytone by Kundert, but he is missing a land drop here. That is not great. There we see Sarah Angel. Does he have an answer for this, Sarah? Perhaps a Swords? I mean, at least Kunert knows now that Baron is playing creature, a creature-heavy deck. So he can just board in all everything he has against creatures, right? So he can really focus on just taking out the creatures on Baron's side. Uh, tapping four here. There is the Rocket Launcher. So he can actually use the Rocket Launcher to kill both Birds of Paradise if he wants to. I wonder if he does. It also depends if Baron has a land drop here. There we see Disenchant on the Jam Day Tome. And passing turn here. So this could be interesting for Kundert because basically Baron is saying, I don't have a land because he missed his land drop. So that could make it worthwhile for Kundert. He's playing a Disenchant instead on COP Red. And a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I love this. Look at that. A white ward in the hand of Baron Nick. It's, I, I really love seeing cards like, like white ward being played. It's, it's so cool. And white ward is not too bad, you know. I mean, everybody plays with plows, right? And a white ward protection from plows. So let's see what Kunder can do after drawing a fresh seven. He's going to do a land drop and a fower stone. So he's really ramping up, which is good. It also means that his rocket launcher gets stronger, right? The more mana he has, the better the rocket launcher gets. Baron Nick now has got a lot of mana, playing a Sol Ring um, as well. And of course his land drop, tapping everything here. And there is an Urnum, followed by a Surrender Perfrit. Now remember, the Urnum is not as scary for Kundert because of the COP green. So the biggest problem right now for him is the Surrender Perfrit. He is still on 19. There is a Red Elemental Blast on the Surrender Perfrit, so that's actually quite nice. Tapping 4, tapping 4. 5-6 here for a Tetravis 4-4 four, four flyer. Things are kind of looking up for Kundert here. And uh, he's doing really well so far. But of course, Baron has a full hand still. And there we see a Sylvan Library. So now it's up for Kundert to try to deal some damage for Baron. Because remember, life is now cards because of that Sylvan. Attacking here, paying 1 to the COP green. So this is... I'm not sure if it is a mistake. And there we see Kundert taking off the counter, so that means he gets three Tetravites, 1-1 one, one flying creatures. They do have Summoning Sickness right now. 
So he cannot attack with them. That's the only downside when you take off the counters. But of course, starting next turn, he can attack with his Armada. For now, he can still attack with the Tetravis, which is now a 1-1. And that's exactly what he does. Also animating the Mishra's Factory. That means Baronic is going to drop to 21. I wonder if he's going to use the Sylvan. Still has more than enough life. Looking at the top three cards, going to make decisions here. Is he getting all three? I believe he's getting all three. Three, he is. He's going to go down to 13. He is ballsy, playing an ivory tower. And you know what, Baronic? I expected this from you, man, to take the risk. That's just the kind of player you are. There we see a divine offering on the ivory tower. I think this is a very important move for Kundert here because ivory tower, Sylvan Library with the life game, the life get drawing cards machines, it's very dangerous. He was seeing an attack four for four points. Baronic is taking the damage, going to drop to nine now. And what else can he do? Maybe a Triskelion taking out the birds. Ooh, he's stepping a lot. Colossus of Sardia. Oh, disintegrates. Is this game already? Swords on his own creature. So he's going to gain. Going to go back to 13. Going to take 9. So he's on 4 now. That Swords to Plowsiers has, has kind of saved his life here. And Kundert, you're so close. And that's it. That's victory. Game number two for Kundert here. And man, that was an interesting game too. Really nice to see. And here you can see the impact of sideboarding, right? After sideboarding, you know the strategy of the other player. And in this case, Kundert knew, okay, what Baron wants to do is play creature after creature after creature after creature. So I got to board everything in I can to stop those creatures. And you know what, Kundert? You succeeded. And now we're going to the all deciding game number three game number three the all deciding game who wins this will advance to the top eight of this reaper masters tournament remember 45 wizards started here we see baronic having an attack with the mistress factory some early pressure that's what he loves to do playing a birds of paradise attacking again and we see kundert he's played out two uh urza lands and oh he's stuck on land he's just passing turn this is brutal Oh no, not like this, not like this. But I'm sure Baron's like, okay, I can make top eight here. He's playing a Juggernaut and Kunert really needs something. Okay, at least the planes, does he have Disenchant or Swords? They are instant, so of course he doesn't have to play them already. Remember, Baron has to attack with the Juggernaut, so we'll know soon enough if Kunert has an answer for this. He's now still on 16, so you know if he just starts drawing into lands, having answers to the creature threats, he's okay. Attacking here with the Jugger. There we see. This is actually quite nice. Divine Offering means he gains 4 life as well. He goes back to 20. There we see another Juggernaut with a White Ward on it. Ooh. That is difficult. How cool it is to see this White Ward, by the way. But a Lightning Bolt. This is why White Ward isn't played that often. But it was a really cool play, Baron. Because remember, White Ward protects a creature from white. So that includes Disenchant and Swords to Plowshares. Unfortunately for Baron... Kundert had a, uh, a lightning bolt. There we also see a plow on the Mishra's factory. So Kundert's actually pretty successful in stabilizing the board. And he plays a clay statue, 3-1. And for two, re you can regenerate it. But a quick divine offering from Baron, gaining three life as well. He's now already on 26. That means if he draws into one of his Sylvans, he can start drawing cards. It looks like Baron is having a bit of a mana issue. There we see Urza's Tower. I believe what... Kundert now needs is an Urza's Mind to have Tron online. He's playing another clay statue. And, ooh, there was a really quick Armageddon. It was hard to see, but this was an Armageddon. There we see the attack by the statue. Baron going to 23. And he's playing a Spirit Link on the clay statue and a Savannah in passing turn here. So Baronic apparently has a lot of lands now. Or, or not, both players now top decking. Waiting to find something to do. There's a Sylvan. Things are really looking up now for Baron. Very swingy game. And those are usually the good games. And tapping four. There is an Urnum. Can Kunert find land? He really needs to find land now. Oh, man. Remember, Urnum is 4-5. So it doesn't really mind that the clay statue has three power. That's not going to hurt. There we see Baron taking lots of extra cards because he's got the life. He doesn't, he doesn't mind. He's still on 19 after taking the extra card. Attacking here. Kundert falling to 16. There we see a Juggernaut. Kundert now really needs land. You need land. Oh, man. Discarding another card. And Kundert really dying to that Armageddon here because before the Armageddon, he, he, had, he had things in business, man. He had stabilized the board. He'd gotten back 
from that early aggression from Baron. To make matters worse, there we see the um, swords to plowshares and the attack. Nine damage here done by Baron. Kundert dropping to ten. And that said, oh man, Kundert, man, this is salty. This is salty. <laughs> But Baron, man, I mean, it's part of what your deck wants to do. He's playing with Armageddon's. He wants to use them at the right time. That's exactly what you did. Um, man, but this was a very interesting matchup. And I would like to thank you both for bringing these cool decks to the tournament and, um, and recording your matches here so I can make a match video out of it. Really, really brilliant. Thank you both for playing. Uh, Baron, it was really nice to see White Ward in action. I think it's the first time that White Ward is here on Timmy Talk. So that's a new card introduced here on the channel. And that always feels good, you know, when a new card, you know, gets a moment. A new old card, I should say, always feels good. So now we're taking a look at the deck of the winner. Baron Nick, pay eight. You will advance to the, um, to the top eight of this tournament. And who knows, maybe we'll see you again in a top eight next week. Because next week, Tuesday, I'll bring you more magic from the Reprint Master. So if you like this tournament, if you like what you see, Man, come back next week, Tuesday. I have another Reprint Masters video for you. For now, thank you for watching. And if you want to help the channel out, there are actually three things that you can do that are completely free, but really help the channel grow. The first thing is you can hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, that really helps a lot. Another thing that you can do is you can leave a comment here in the comment section. Whatever, man, it all helps the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you have any questions about the games, feel free to post your questions down below. I'll try to answer them and I can also ask the players to answer them. So if you have questions about the deck or about decisions in the game, ask them, be my guest. The third thing that you can do, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, you're probably not a subscriber yet. So what you can do is hit that subscribe button. The more subscribers Timmy Talks has, um, the bigger it is according to YouTube and the more my videos will show, turn up in other people's YouTube feeds. So if you want to help the channel, those are the three things you can do completely for free. And then there's another thing you can do. You can become a patron of the channel, just like Baron and Kundert. And the cool thing is if you become a patron, you can actually join the Timmy Talks tournaments. I organize tournaments every like two months, sometimes three months. Uh, but I try to, you know, organize events and, and do things to thank my channel members and my patrons for their support. So I organize these events to thank them for, for their support. And of course, because I like it, I, I'm, I'm playing in these events too. I love playing Magic. So yeah, so if you if you like what you see and if you want to join these tournaments, um, check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. There's an info card appearing right now. Click on there and then you get to see how you can support Timmy Talks. And uh, I guess what you get back for supporting Timmy Talks, one of those things actually is your name in the end scroll. How cool is that, you know? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, the fantastic, the wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.